Good afternoon. I'm welcome at uh, Elector Live here in Eindhoven in this magnificent building of Philips. I'm here with uh, Henk van Houten and he is in uh, Philips organization responsible for all the new innovations and all the research. He's general manager of research of Philips. Um, I'm here with him and we just well, had a walk around. What is your first impression if you see uh, this weird combination of people walking around and uh, interested in electronics? What do you think? I think it's a great atmosphere of very enthusiastic people who all share a passion for innovation and building things. And I think the creativity is visible everywhere. You, you have been uh, one of our readers uh, yourself. You have been reading Electro in the past. Do you recognize what is going on here? Yeah, I, I was uh, a subscription on Electro when it was called Electure. Yes. And I've built quite a few things from inspired by the magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way from an uh, oscilloscope uh, to uh, audio equipment and measurement equipment. What has made this change in your career? Because from being enthusiastic about electronics, you now have enthusiasm for businesses and new processes like innovation. Of course I've always worked in an industrial laboratory so it has always been about innovations that people can bring to the market yeah. and people in a laboratory uh, in an industry uh, only are satisfied when their idea is translated into a product that they can see in the, in the marketplace. Yeah. If you grow uh, in your career then you increasingly can also develop interest in people and uh, also, uh, personally, I was interested in, in, in a very broad area of innovation. And then going to the management path is quite natural for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How many people are now involved with uh, new innovation and research within Philips? Well, let's say we, we distinguish a bit between let's, the front end of innovation and more regular product development. Yeah. I'm responsible for Philips Research, which devotes itself more to the front end. And that is about uh, 2,000 people worldwide. What is driving this group of people? 2,000 people worldwide, they meet, they share ideas with each other, I presume. But what is, what is the driving force of innovation? And what, what do you think is important for this group of people to start working with? What, 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 how do you facilitate these people to be innovative? I think, I think our people share the, the ambition to, in a way, change the world. And uh, in Philips, uh, we want to do, do that in the areas of lighting, uh, lifestyle, and uh, healthcare. And all of these areas are related to great societal challenges. And I think that's what, in the end, really inspires them. Yeah. Yeah. Can we make healthcare more effective? Uh, can we get, improve the outcome? Can we really make sure that people no longer die but can live healthily also when they are very old? Those things inspire people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is, is there still room for big innovations? Is, is there still, you know, we had uh, enormous inventions in the past uh, for radio and television and the CD, etc. Yeah, I'm absolutely convinced that that is the case. Uh, for instance, in healthcare, we have the dream of basically replacing open surgery by minimally invasive interventions. Mm -hmm. So that's the world of intelligent catheters that go into the body through a blood vessel and can repair the heart from within, okay. for instance. And that is a very big area. Yeah, yeah. But also areas like home health care, telemedicine are going to change the world. Yeah. In lighting, we are witnessing a big revolution where all the light bulbs are being replaced by energy efficient LEDs. And these LEDs are going to be intelligent electronic subsystems that you can control individually. Yeah. So also that is a big change. Yeah. Can people like walking around here, we have a collection of people who are interested in electronics, read our magazine, etc., and do something with electronics. How are they, uh, how can they be connected with this at, uh, as well? Are they part of this whole innovation system we're looking at? Well, I understand quite a few of the people here are also professionals. Some of them are, uh, let's say, more interested uh, because they are uh, passionate amateur. Mm -hmm. I think all of them can contribute either in their own company or by coming with very clever ideas for new applications. Yeah. In the 50 years, Elector is now on the market. I think we, we had an excellent time also uh, in, in the past with a lot of Philips people and a lot of involvement there. So thank you for that. You know, that has been excellent. Uh, what, what do you think is important for companies or publishing houses or a company like Philips itself? What is important for the future? What brings together? Is it education? Is it money? Or is it enthusiasm or a mix of all? Well, like myself, I was inspired by 
reading a lecture uh, to go into the direction of innovation and technology. Yeah. And I think that certainly in, the, in Europe, and especially also in the Netherlands, uh, to inspire people to go in that direction is, I think, mo one of the most important tasks. Yeah. Uh, because we don't have enough experts in the fields of electronics, physics, and all the other hard sciences. And to think to inspire people to go that direction and to keep them inspired, that I think is the most important mission. Yeah. And it will cost money. Yes, and I think some of that is also a role for the, for the government to, to stimulate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, companies also do their part. So, for instance, yeah. Philips is involved in an uh, initiative called JetNet, yeah. where we try to touch young school children and go with our scientists into the schools to, get, uh, to stimulate them to be passionate about innovation and technology. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And will this pay off, the JetNet initiative here in Holland? Will, will this, uh, where, where we're trying to get uh, young people involved, uh, young schoolers at basic elementary school level sometimes to start doing things with electronics? Is that, is that um, are we putting in the best effort we can or should we do more? Well, I, think, I think we should do more. Mm. Uh, um, I'm not an expert in this area, but I think the government could do more to consciously choose to stimulate the, the educational directions that really bring benefit to society over other directions of study that bring less of a contribution. Yeah, yeah. For instance, by uh, facilitating uh, uh, taking the course or making the, uh, the, the tuition fees lower. A more personal question, you, you've been reading a lecture, a lecture in the past, do you, do you remember what your first uh, project was where you really was fascinated about the end result? Can, can you can you get back to your first project and what was that? Well, actually, to be honest, the first project was building a radio yeah. uh, starting from a kit that Philips was selling as a toy. <laughs> After that, I uh, used Electure especially to, to build uh, high quality audio equipment. All right. yeah. So, And what I built is a huge uh, amplifier which could also change the impression of stereo. And that I remember, that was yeah, called, yeah. I think, the stereo yeah. uh, it was in Dutch bandbreedte regeling. So I think it was creating uh, more impressive results by amplifying the different signal. Okay, excellent. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I think you're still having this uh, passionate feeling for uh, for electronics and for engineering, etc. Thanks very much for this uh, short interview, um, and uh, we hope to meet you really soon in the future and uh, hopefully have more contact on this. Thank you. Thanks. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very much.